we're interested in investigating neurodegenerative diseases. And so to do that, we're actually using the fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster to try and attempt to model these neurodegenerative diseases to figure out the underlying cellular and molecular mechanisms that are responsible for what's causing these diseases in humans. Fruit flies are kind of in a nice spot where they are simple enough where we can easily manipulate their genomes, look at large scale manipulations at a genome wide scale, but they are advanced enough where whatever we find can hopefully be of some use and relevance to human health and disease. So there, there is some, you know, questions. It does seem unusual to be using fruit flies to model these diseases, but once you understand what you can do with them, what, what the tools are. I mean, you're really just limited by your imagination on what types of experiments you can design. A lot of the flies that we have here are, feel like they're ancient. They've been around since the early 1900s, something like this. We have a cinnabar mutation. We have things like scarlet um, that have been in use for over 100 years in labs throughout the world. Uh, and then we also have flies that are relatively young. So we have some flies that we've generated here in our own lab, so these flies have only been around in existence for the last few months or so. A deal situation will be finding something new for how the proteins that are known to be involved with this disease, how they actually work and trying to be figuring out a way in which we can actually stop that cell death. Could we potentially identify some potential therapeutic target or drug target so that people further on down the pipeline that design drugs to try and treat these things in humans, now they have something that they can try and aim for instead of just designing compounds in the dark.